Let's look at some first order rate laws. First order rate laws are rate laws where the rate is proportional to the initial concentration. So it's proportional to the concentration to the first power. Let's look at a couple examples. Here's N2O5 decomposing into NO2 and oxygen, and N2O4 decomposing into two NO2 molecules. Both of these are first order chemical reactions in kinetics. Their kinetics are such that if I write the rate law, the change in concentration over the change in time is directly proportional to the concentration to the first power. Now, I can also write these rate laws versus time. So A concentration goes as the initial concentration times the exponential of minus kT, e to the minus kT power. So notice both these first order rate laws in this differential form and this form versus time have first order kinetics and one of them here has, look at these various stoichiometric coefficients. Stoichiometric coefficients do not influence in general the rate law. Rate law must be determined experimentally. So you can't look at a chemical reaction and write down rate laws. You have to do an experiment. And that's where this equation versus time helps because if you take the natural log of this expression, you get the natural log of the A concentration is the natural log of the initial concentration minus kT. And that's a linear expression in the natural log of A versus T. So if you measure concentrations, take their natural log, and plot them versus time, you get a straight line. And that's important. That's actually how you determine if a chemical reaction has first order kinetics. You measure concentrations versus time, take the natural log, and plot versus time. If it's linear, that means there's first order kinetics. Now, another property of first order reactions is their half-life. The half-life is defined to be the time it takes for one half of the initial reactant to disappear, or the initial concentration to fall by a factor of two. For first order reactions, the half-life, T1 half, is ln2 over k. And it's interesting to note that's not dependent on the initial amount. So if you had a 10 kilograms of A in a liter of water, that would decompose down to 5 kilograms in the same time it would take 1 milligram to decompose down to half a milligram if that's the chemical reaction. So half-life's independent of the amount, the initial amount or the concentration for first order chemical reactions. So these properties of the kinetics often tell us something about the reaction. For instance, the mechanism of the reaction. How is the reaction actually proceeding? In first order kinetics, it's dependent on the concentration of only one species to the first power. That means you have to kind of wait around till that species does something. It, it's, there's clearly some internal process within that species that's giving it this first order kinetics. It's only dependent on that concentration. So what you get is some mechanistic insight. How does the reaction actually proceed? You can derive from kinetic studies. One of the most important features of kinetics is the mechanistic insight that we can derive.